One last lesson to learn before we really start moving into the velocity problems. This one can be learned through the problem we're about to solve here. We're going to do something similar to the last video. We look at us rolling a ball across the table, but this time we roll from the opposite end of the meter stick, opposite end of the table. The ball starts to roll. All right, can we start over here? Here's the meter stick. That one. But here it starts at the 90 centimeter mark. And it rolls until it gets to the 45 centimeter mark. And it takes the ball five seconds to travel there. First thing we always like to do in these problems, well, something I'm going to start doing every time, is we like to draw a little picture to kind of gather our thoughts. It doesn't have to be anything complicated or incredibly artistic, just something to get your mind into the problem. Now, second thing we want to do is we want to take these numbers out of the problem and indicate which measurement they are. It started, the ball started at the 90 centimeter mark. That's a description of where the object is, so it is a position. Furthermore, it was the first position the object was, so we're going to call it the initial position. The ball ended at the 45 centimeter mark, so we're going to call that its final position. The time it took to get there was from one point to another was five seconds. This is not the initial time it started at. This is not the final time it started at. This is the duration the ball was moving. Anytime we talk about a duration, it's a time period. It's a length of time. So this here is our delta t. Now, before we can solve for the velocity using this equation, delta x over delta t, we first have to find delta x. Delta x is a change in position. It is the final position minus the initial position. The final position, 45 centimeters. The initial position is 90 centimeters. And here's where the importance of this lesson comes in. If we take 45 minus 90 centimeters, it is not 45 centimeters. The answer is negative 45 centimeters. Now, what does this negative mean? This is the displacement. In the last problem, we started the ball off at one end of the ruler, and it traveled a certain distance in a certain time. This answer we got was a positive value. It was a positive displacement. Notice what has changed in this case. Here, the ball is traveling in the opposite direction. The symbol that comes out of displacement tells us the direction the object is moving. In the first case, it was in a positive direction, to the right. However, in this case, the ball is traveling in the opposite direction. This is the importance of this symbol here, and it will follow not into just displacement, but every calculation we do afterwards. If we take the displacement, plug into the velocity equation, velocity is now displacement, negative 45 centimeters divided by the time it took to do so five seconds this is taking this equation right here and plugging these values in we found out that the velocity is equal to 45 divided by 5 I'm sorry negative 45 divided by 5 is negative 9 centimeters per second centimeters per second being our unit before, in the last problem, we saw for an, a positive velocity, but now the velocity is negative. This has the exact same meaning. If the velocity is negative, that simply means the object is moving in the opposite direction. If we initially said that the positive direction is to the right, like we did in the first problem, in this case, it's traveling to the left in a negative direction. This is the same for a negative displacement or a negative velocity. Think about what it would mean if there was a negative time. For that to happen, let's come over here, you would have to be looking at a clock. If the initial reading on this clock was 10 seconds, this would be time initial, what would it take for a negative value on this? Well, that would mean that a delta t is tf minus ti. If this value here, the initial time was 10 seconds. The final time would have to be smaller than 10 seconds, maybe 9 seconds. That would give us a time period 
of negative one second. But that would say that the time started at 10 seconds, but the time ended at nine seconds. This would indicate time is going backwards. Now, I can only speak for myself, um, but I have never indicated or been in a situation where time has traveled backwards. In physics, we consider this to be not possible. So if you ever come up in a situation where you have a negative time period, there has been a mistake in the math somewhere, or maybe a mistake in a measurement. We should never have a negative time period. Negative time, it just doesn't happen. Negative displacement, negative velocities, those do happen, and they're very important to recognize when you see them. Awesome.